Hello Internet and welcome to CodeBig and in this video we will be going through and solving the unique email address problem. So I hope you are excited. Let's get started. Now let's jump right into the problem statement which goes something like this. Every email consists of a local name and a domain name which is separated by an at sign. For example, in mark at teamcodebig.com, mark is the local name and teamcodebig.com is the domain name. Besides lowercase letters, these emails may also contain periods and plus signs. If you add a period between some characters in the local name part of the email address, Mails in there will be forwarded to the same address without the period in the local name. So, for example, alice.z at teamcodebig.com and alice.z at teamcodebig.com forward to the same email address. If you add a plus sign in the local name, everything after the plus sign will be ignored. This allows certain emails to be filtered, for example, m.y plus name at email.com will be forwarded to only my at email.com. It is possible to use both of these rules at the same time. Given a list of emails, we send one email to each address in the list. How many different email address actually receives the mail? I know, I know, like there was a lot of things to digest, but let me just break it down to you in simple terms. So let's check out the input that goes into our program. Here we see that the input is an array of strings and these strings contain email addresses which are a combination of period and the plus sign. So all you need to do if you have a period is you need to remove it and join the two text. So, in the first case, test.email would be just text email and any text after the plus is ignored. So again, if we look into the first case, we will end up having test email at teamcodebeck.com. And finally, we will be showing only unique domain names. That is, we will be showing only teamcodebeck.com and teamcodebeck.com.com. So, that is our task in hand. Although it looks like a lot of work to solve this problem, let me tell you, it falls into the easy category. So just pause this video right here and try to solve it on your own. You can head over to the description to find the ripple link for this problem and give it a shot. You can just leave a comment below if you are stuck. Either me or someone from the community will help you for sure. With that being said, pause the video and give it a shot. Okay guys, I hope you were able to solve it. And if not, don't worry. Just think of it as your first step towards success. And also, don't forget to subscribe because there are a lot of problems like these which we will be solving in the future. And also, if you have any particular coding problem that you want me to solve, leave a link to it in the comment section below. So, here is how I would have solved this problem. The first step would be to double check what are the inputs and what are the outputs. So, let's first create an emails array that holds all of our input data. Now that in place, let's start writing the function that actually does the required task. We will name this function get unique email. Here I am using the latest ES6 arrow syntax to define my function. And this function takes each individual email from the emails as a parameter. Now the very first thing to do is get the local and the domain from each individual email. We can do that using the split method and using an at as a separator for split. Let me just really quickly console log domain and local. So you have a better idea of what we are storing in the local and the domain variables. 
I will just for now change the email to a single email that I get from the emails variable up here and I will run the get unique email function down here. In the console on my right, you can see that we get test.email plus alex as the value stored in local and teamcodebig.com as the value stored in our domain variable. So the next thing we need to do is simply remove the period and join the two strings and remove the plus but only keep the data on the left side of the plus sign. Now let's jump in and code that part out as well. I will start off by creating a variable called res which stands for result and I will assign the local variable to res and I will chain on the split method on the local and I tell the separator is the plus sign this time. Just so you guys know what the value of res is, I will console log it out. As you can see, what we get is an array consisting of test.email at the array index of 0 and alex at the array index of 1. So as you now know, we only need the value at the array index of 0. So we just select the first value like this. Next, we need to split the value based on the period as a separator. How we approach this problem is quite interesting. There are two ways to solve this problem. Either we can go on to create a new variable each time or we can go on and change a new method on the existing ones. I don't prefer to create a new variable in this case because we will not be handling the space complexity very well. So we will change the split method to the existing local variable. This is how you would do it. Once that is done, I will console log the result to show you what will be the output. You can see now that clearly we get an array of tests and email without the period and that is what we wanted. Now the last thing to do is to join these two strings and that's simple. We use the join method and the separator we use is an empty string to join the two strings together. If we console log the result this time, we get test email and voila, we have solved 90% of the problem by now. The only thing left for us to do is chain the at and the domain. So here is how you would do that. If we console log the result out now, we get the desired output. As you can see, we have hard coded the input values here and that's not what we want. So let's first remove the console log and then remove this hard coded email address with the email parameter. Once that is done, the last thing left for us to do is return the result from this function or I can clean it up just a little bit by removing this return statement and also removing the result variable and we will return everything from this function. There is of course one more thing left for us to do before we come to the end of this video and that is we need to show only unique domains. So in this case we have two teamcodebig.com and one teamcodebig.com.com domains. But we just need to show only one teamcodebig.com and one teamcodebig.com.com domain. We are able to achieve this by creating a new variable called uemail which stands for unique email and we create a new set instance. If you don't know what a set is, a set lets you store unique values of any type. Finally, we can console log the u email and when you look at the console log, you see that it returns a new set object and that is not what we want, right? The expected output is an array. So a simple fix would be to use the object spreading which is another new feature available in ES6. We can achieve this by doing an array and three dots followed by u email and that's it. If you run it now this time it returns the expected output. So that's it guys we have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so drop a like and subscribe it helps us a lot. If you have any specific topic in your mind please leave a comment below so I can make a video on it. You can also get in touch with us on social media. Check out the links in the description below. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.